Today we're going to talk about two common surfaces that you might have to shoot in product photography. Metallic and transparent. We're going to talk about the differences between them, we're going to do a demonstration, and I'm going to show you some advanced techniques. Now let's take a look at how light plays with a transparent object, okay? So one common issue that I see happen a lot is kind of represented here with what we're using as our setup. We've got a couple of large lights. You can see we have like a large octabox here. We've got one on the left that's illuminating me, one on the right that's illuminating me, but they're also illuminating the object, okay? So one of the problems, this is kind of a very typical type of a setup someone might use because they feel like that light's going to, you know, illuminate the entire object and that's what they're going for. A couple problems can come from that though. When we take a look at this object, we're going to see um, a highlight running down the side here, or kind of in the front. Whenever you place a light in the front of an object that is reflective, like a transparent object like this, that light is going to hit the object and bounce right back to the camera. So we're going to create, it's basically creating this really kind of a hard, highlight right here. The problem with that is kind of twofold. With a bottle like this, that highlight being not really in the middle, but kind of in the middle, it's not giving that bottle much form and texture. We want to be able to see the shape and the outline of the bottle, and that's not really happening right now. The second problem is that that highlight might run through like a logo or some branding, or maybe just something we really want to see in the object, but that highlight's going to cut through it. So we want to be able to control where our highlights go and not just kind of have them in front of the object. That's the first thing we want to do is the position of the light really matters. There's a trick that I use that kind of helps me visualize what's going to happen uh, with the light as we you know, move it and what type of light we use. So we're going to show you that now also. We've turned off those two large soft boxes and I'm just going to show you a technique with a flashlight. This is a really simple thing that I do to try to figure out how light plays with uh, different types of objects. In this case, a transparent object. What we can see is, you know, this light obviously goes directly through the object. So that's a, a property of a transparent object that's different from most other objects. Uh, the light goes directly through it, so it can kind of bounce off of the other side. Sometimes we could just use a reflector, a white card on the other side to bounce light in. We can put light through the object to shoot towards the camera. We could try to aim light directly at like the logo, for instance, and you'll see what happens there. And as we move it around, you can just kind of take a look as you're doing this on your own to see when you get something that looks really nice versus something that has a really hard specular highlight that's aimed directly back at the camera where we can't see any information at all. Now we have a metallic object in here that we're gonna take a look at. Right off the bat, you can tell that the metallic object interacts with those lights a lot differently than the transparent object did. So um, we can see that, or kind of not see, the idea of that um, specular highlight is kind of gone right now because this is kind of a brushed aluminum surface. So with metallic, some metallic objects are going to have kind of a matte surface to them. So whereas on the, on the transparent object, uh, we had like a high gloss finish, so we had this really strong specular highlight coming back to the camera. Now the same lights and the same setup are kind of a more of a, a matte surface. They're just kind of diffused across that surface. So it's really not nearly as big of a problem on something like this. We're also shooting it on a white surface. That white surface is bouncing light back up onto it. Overall, it's giving us some nice, even flat lighting, but it's still not doing a lot to make it really interesting. I mean, it's fine. This is fine for like an Amazon type shot, but if we really wanted to add some intrigue and some, some shape and form to it, we would want to manipulate those lights a little bit more. Front lighting can kind of do some good stuff with metallic objects, but uh, if you have a really glossy metallic object, you're going to run into the same problems you had with that transparent object. The big difference obviously is that because this is not transparent, the light is not going to go through it it's going to reflect just off of the sides. So we have to be aware of that as we're manipulating the lighting for this object.
One of the most common issues I'll see happen is, you know, sometimes people will grab a strip box like I have here behind me, uh, and they'll just put the strip box in front of the object to take the shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take that shot and take a look at it. We're gonna turn off our main light here that's illuminating me so that we can only have our strip box on, and we're gonna take that shot now. So we'll get that lined up. We're gonna take the same shot with the metallic object so that we can take a look at both of them. Once again, we're gonna turn off our main light here. As we take a look at these two different images, um, the metallic and the transparent, notice the first thing I personally notice is that that highlight appears larger on the metallic object than it does on the transparent object. The reason for that, again, is because the metallic object has more of a matte surface, so it spreads that light out on the surface a little bit more. So it illuminates a little bit more of the object. Whereas on that transparent object, it's a very, very thin highlight, a very thin line. We do, you know, illuminate the logo somewhat well, but we're not really giving a whole lot of shape and form to the bottle. And also in both cases, when we're just using one light, you can see that it creates a pretty harsh shadow off to the right side of the object. Using a light kind of in front or to the left or to the right of an object, if you just use a strip box, it doesn't really give you a kind of a complete lighting of the object. It's gonna do an okay job to give you light on the object, but it's really not gonna give you a professional quality uh, type of fit and finish that you're going for. Let's take a look at some other options that we might be able to use to get a little bit better lighting, more complete lighting. you can see now is that we've moved that strip box light over to the side of the object more. And it's basically just all the way over to the side, but I do want to kind of note that I, it's as low as that light will go. We could make it a little bit lower, but it's lined up with the table here. We want that to be low because that's gonna dictate how long that strip of light looks on the object. So let's take a look and see what that looks like when we shoot it. Great, we've got that metallic object in place. Let's go ahead and take our shot and see what we get with that strip box on the far side of the metallic. Just by moving that light over to the side, we have, it's really obvious on the transparent object. We've pushed that highlight over to the side. Now we don't have to worry so much about it running through the middle of the logo or creating this really high area of contrast that's gonna pull the viewer's eye away too bad. And also it's creating a thin layer of highlight and shadow on the edge of the bottle. So it gives that bottle a feeling of dimension and form and shape. You will notice one problem we have is that the Perrier logo now on this bottle is not fully illuminated at, like it was before. That's okay because we're not just going to use one light for this setup. We could easily double or duplicate this setup and put another light on the other side that would create two highlights and then it would fill in that middle spot there. Now if we take a look at the ball cup, our metallic object, you can see that for the most part it's done a lot of the same here as far as creating a highlight on that left side. Again, because this is a matte substance, it's going to diffuse that light a little bit more on the left. So it's still creating pretty good lighting across the entire object. Over to the right, obviously, we definitely have shadow over there, but again, that could be filled in by a secondary light on that side, or we could use um, a bounce card or something like that. We've talked about how to get a good side light on the object and really it does a pretty good job overall, but let's take it a step further. Let's take a look at how to kind of soften that light up or spread it and make it look a little bit better. So what we're really gonna be looking at here is we still have our softbox set up to the side here, but now you can see what I've done is I've added in what's called a flag. Now a flag is any sort of a diffusion material. Okay, this is specifically called a flag, but you could use a bed sheet. You could use all sorts of different things for this. All it's doing is it's double diffusing that softbox and it's changing how that diffusion is angled, okay? So if a softbox just hit the, uh, hits the side, that's when we saw that really thin highlight. What this flag is gonna do is it's gonna take that light and it's gonna diffuse it out more and you can see I have it at an angle here. Well, when I create an angle with that flag, it's gonna change how much of that gradient appears on the object. So if I just put the flag directly up against the softbox, 
it's really all, only gonna, all it's gonna do is eat up some more light. But if I angle it, it's gonna hit hard in one little area and then it's gonna diffuse that highlight out along the entire face of the bottle. So let's take a look at what this actually does. We can compare it to the previous shot. There we go, we can see kind of what happens. And what you can really see going on here is when we just have the softbox on the side, we have a really nice highlight, but it's pretty strong. When we put that flag on that side, what it does is it softens that highlight up. So now instead of that highlight being super high contrast, super hard, and being something that the eye kind of immediately goes to, now it's much less noticeable. And that's kind of the name of the game in photography. A lot of the times we don't want people to know exactly how we lit something. We don't want that highlight to be super strong and super obvious. We want it to just kind of accompany and just complement what we're doing. So this softer highlight just kind of caresses the edge of the bottle, gives it more of a, a feeling of shape and form. So it works a lot better. Now we've switched out again. We're gonna look at what happens when we use the metallic object with the flag. When we're comparing that metallic object, we really see kind of the same stuff. What's happening is it's really softening up that highlight quite a bit. And it's giving us a really, really pleasing light on this entire object. I mean, honestly, we almost don't even need to, to light the other side of it, but we still can to use like kind of an advanced feature. But this is really giving a nice soft light because of that flag being slightly angled towards the object. It's kind of wrapping that light around. It's even illuminating the inside rim uh, somewhat well. If you just wanted to use one light, this would work pretty well well on a metallic object like this. We always want to take an approach to do one light at a time, right? So we figured out that left side and we've done a good job with the flag filling it in. Now, how are we going to fill in the other side, the right side? Well, we could just duplicate our setup if we wanted to. We could get another light, another flag and duplicate it or in the case of especially um, these objects we're shooting today, we could make it a lot easier on ourselves and we could just use a white card or a reflector on that side. So I've got one that's specific that uh, can stand up on its own. These are very simple. You could just get a piece of card stock if you wanted to and put something behind it to hold it up. So I'm gonna place this in the scene. And all I'm trying to do when I'm placing this in the scene is I wanna make sure that I don't see it in my viewfinder when I look through my camera and I want it to be in front of the object enough that I can actually see um, the, re the light reflecting off of my other light. So now we're going to take a look and see what that looks like when we take a shot. When we compare the two images of the Perrier bottle or our transparent object with just the light on one side versus putting that reflector in there, that reflector just subtly adds a little bit of light on that right side. It does not really create a big highlight. It does create a little bit of a highlight on that side, but not much of one, but it's not competing with that left side very much. This is really good. Artistically, what we want is to have one side that has a little bit more emphasis on it than the other. We do not necessarily want it to be perfectly even on both sides. Just putting that little reflector in there, that piece of white card, has really illuminated that side. We'd want to mess around with it a little bit more to get that Perrier logo to be consistently white across the front, but that would just consist of us moving our lights around a little bit more to the front to kind of get that illuminated a little bit better. The reason why this white card works so well uh, on like a transparent object is because a lot of that light from our left side that's coming from an actual light source is going all the way through the bottle and then hitting our white card and bouncing back onto this transparent object. An opaque object or like a metallic object won't work quite the same way because the same amount of light is not hitting that reflector because the object itself is stopping the light. But in this case, we can see it goes all the way through, bounces back onto that side and really gives us a nice good amount of light on that right side. Now we've switched out, we have metallic object back in there. And again, we've got our flag set up on this side and we've got a reflector set up on the right side. So let's just take a look and see what that looks like. 
we can see that it really illuminates that other side really nicely. It does take a little bit of manipulation to get that right, because if you put that reflector too far in front of your metallic object, it's going to reflect that light directly back onto the front and that's gonna hit back to the camera. So it's gonna create a little bit more of a specular highlight. So you really wanna move your reflector over to the full side of your object instead of putting it towards the front. But now we can really see that that's giving it a really nice highlight on that side. And honestly, that highlight on the right side almost looks as good as the highlight on the left side. You will also notice that we still have a shadow on the right side. Again, that is good because we want to be able to show a little bit of informal symmetry there. We want it to uh, have an obvious shadow where again the shadow is going to help to create contrast and it's also going to help to create separation and a feeling of form and shape to our object. We've covered a lot today but the truth is we've just scratched the surface of the basics of lighting metallic and transparent objects. If you wanted to get more advanced you could do things like using a metallic card behind your transparent object to allow light to reflect through it or you could use a snoot attachment on your favorite flash to be able to illuminate uh, specific parts of your objects, maybe the logo or the branding. You could also do things like light painting or replicate the lighting on the other side with something different than a flag to make it look different on another side. So many things you can do. Again, we've just scratched the surface. So thanks for joining us today. Please come back and stay tuned for more content. Stop smiling. <laughs> Jump in the line, make the money on time. Okay, I believe you. Okay. Move. Do they know it's Christmas time at all? Yep. What am I saying? Good, I got it. Dimensions, demonstrations. Joe Dirt DVD. Go Pocky Cod, Harvard Yard. Pocky Cod, Harvard Yard. Pock and then we're gonna jump in the line. The Stoic Setter Saved the Spaniel. Okay. Um, also. Oh. So. Let's do the same thing. Nose itches. I do have an itchy nose. I don't know what that's about. I am crossing over into Aunt old mandom. So my nose hairs are growing, apparently. Oh. There you go. Oh, wow. Pop, pop, pop. Things like light painting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, put it up, put it up. <laughs> Even though it's off to the side, you would have seen my eyes. <laughs> my eyes would have been like, Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> Do you want to like go get a water? Or no, 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 no.